Good evening and welcome to the Cancer Education Series brought to you by Mercy One and Above and Beyond Cancer. Today's programming is br brought to you in part because of a grant that we received from the Iowa Cancer Consortium. My name is Chris Goodale and I'm the Executive Director of Above and Beyond Cancer. And it's my weekly pleasure to introduce the founder of our organization, Dr. Dick Deming, who will introduce our program for this evening. Dr. Deming. Hey, Chris. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we got a great uh, program for you tonight. As you know, I'm a big believer in helping to take care of uh, the overall patient. It's not just about treating cancer cells. It's about taking care of patients. And uh, that's a mind, body, spirit approach to health. And we've got um, uh, two individuals tonight who are going to talk about uh, self-care. So exercises and practices you can do at home to help relieve pain and improve your health. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chris Larang is a chiropractic physician. He grew up in Davenport, went to the University of Iowa undergrad, and got his chiropractic degree at Palmer Chiropractic uh, School and uh, has a practice. And Chris is in the East Village, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Chris has uh, spoken to our group uh, many times before, and we're, we're glad to have him back. And he brought with him uh, the physical therapist who works in his office, Krim, Corinne Schreier. Corinne is from Michigan, and she went uh, did her undergrad in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, and got her uh, physical therapy, doctor of physical therapy degree at Des Moines University and now is the physical therapist in uh, Chris's practice. And the two of them are going to tag team and teach us what we can do at home to help relieve pain and improve our health. So I'll turn it over to you, Chris and Corinne. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks for the very kind introduction, uh, Dr. Deming, and uh, thanks to Dr. Schreier for joining me this evening. So we're both in separate offices here, so we can take off our masks for the day. Uh, so I will uh, share our screen here. So bear with me for just a moment. Uh, good. And share. We'll start this here. And Corinne, uh, Dr. Schreier and I uh, are going to uh, go back and forth on this presentation. So, so uh, she'll address a couple of exercises. I'll address a couple of exercises. Basically, we're looking at the top 10 at-home exercises for pain relief and self-treatment. And uh, a big thank you again to Dr. Deming and to uh, uh, Chris for having us for this series. Uh, this is our uh, team at the clinic. Uh, if ever you do come in or see us, uh, we took our masks off for just a moment for this photo. Uh, uh, and that team, uh, as you can see, Dr. Schreier and I here, uh, again, this was taken before the pandemic, so we could stand close together without masks. Uh, but uh, Corinne joined our team in February, and it's been just a really lovely addition to our clinical offerings. Uh, a bit about my history. Again, Dr. Deming mentioned the University of Iowa, uh, my Palmer uh, College uh, degree for the, for the chiropractic degree. I own this clinic, uh, uh, co-owner of a, the Wellness Group, which is a compliance uh, company, uh, Building Your Baby from the Ground Up, which is a, a, a developmental kinesiology uh, brand talking about how infants learn to move, how we can help them move best. I sit on a board for the Iowa Chiropractic Society. I play in a band here in town and I have two kiddos. Uh, and I'll pass this on to Dr. Schreier for her introduction here. Okay, well, and uh, Mr. Deming went over some of my history also. Um, like he said, I'm from Michigan, went to Grand Valley State University got to spend some time in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I went to Des Moines University and for my doctorate degree, and then uh, I am now a physical therapist with Dr. Lorraine's practice. Um, I did want to kind of mention a little bit about why I decided, why we decided to combine chiropractic and physical therapy, because this isn't a widely um, uh, accepted thing right now, not accepted, but it's not practiced as often it is trending. Um, and oftentimes you'll see them separated, but this was a, a big desire for me because both Chris and I understood that uh, pairing exercise with uh, manipulations, whether it's for the spine or other joints, um, this 
this could work in a very synergistic effect. And so that was, it's been my dream to kind of do this kind of partnership. So I'm thankful to be a part of the team. Yeah, nice. So again, we're looking at top 10 uh, at-home exercises uh, for pain relief and self-treatment. Uh, as we go forward here, it, in, in theory, you'll leave this presentation with actionable steps to improve mobility, stability, strength, uh, improve your lifestyle, reduce pain. If ever these exercises uh, uh, may cause you pain, obviously this is our medical disclaimer. This is mainly for education purposes. Uh, always seek the advice of your physician or another qualified health provider. And if that's us or another person on your healthcare team, uh, please do reach out with any questions you have. Uh, you can try these exercises at home but if they make you worse or if, if you have any adverse uh, responses to them, please do seek out uh, uh, some attention and, and seek uh, qualified uh, advice. A point of clarification here that I wanna make before we dig in. So you'll hear us talk about pain and, and, and really we're talking about mechanical pain, pain that comes from your joints in your, in your spine or in your extremities pain that comes from, from uh, uh, your, your joints, soft tissues, muscles, ligaments, tendons, that sort of thing. We're not talking necessarily about pain caused by cancer or caused by a cancer treatment. So uh, that, that's a different animal altogether and, and can sometimes be treated with medications and listen, can benefit from these types of, of treatments, may benefit rather, uh, uh, but for the most part, we're addressing the mechanical concepts of pain in this presentation. Uh, just a rough roadmap here. We're going to uh, go through an overview, a demonstration of exercises. We'll, we'll recap them at the end and, and then uh, look at a QA and a uh, if anybody has questions. And, and without a doubt, if you have any questions throughout, uh, uh, please do uh, reach out. So I'll let Corinne start here, the, the first uh, exercise. So Corinne, I'll let you take over. Okay, so this is not only uh, an exercise, but also maybe a habit change, uh, a lifestyle change. I do feel like, and maybe Chris can agree with me on this, but I, I don't have a legitimate statistic, but I feel as though 90% of the patients that I see, their problems stem from their poor posture. And uh, I don't know if that's super, if how accurate that is, but that's what it feels like in, in the clinic. Now, of course, there are other things that go along with that, um, but working on changing your posture and improving your postural habits can allow you to be at a much reduced risk for developing injury. And so not only am I gonna be talking about sitting posture throughout the day, but especially with our desk jobs. So um, I have a couple of pictures here. You can see, uh, I, I tell people, you know, we spend a lot of time sitting. And so we might as well make sure that we're doing it right. Because if we do it wrong, it puts you at risk for injury. Um, so I talk about the 90 degree rule. If you look at the if you look at the lady in the picture on the left, you can see the, the one with the check mark, the one that you should be doing. You see maybe her, like her, her ankles, her knees, her hips, and her elbows are all kind of at 90 degrees. And this is gonna allow for neutral joint positioning. Um, and so just changing some of that stuff can put you on a better track for reducing, maybe you've got some hip pain, low back pain, um, even some neck pain. That's gonna set you up for better success. And also notice, how uh, the picture on the right, you've got zones on your desk. Um, making This is gonna force you to sit more upright, making sure that you have your most frequent zone, you know, the closest to you with your, with your elbows bent at 90 degrees. Rarely should you be reaching and bending across your desk. So maybe we need to be pulling some stuff closer. Maybe we need to adjust the height of your uh, monitor so it's at eye level or just below. Um, but oftentimes setting yourself up at your desk to be a little bit more successful, again, it's, it can, it can uh, go a long way with improving your, your symptoms potentially. You wanna go ahead, there we go. So I have a couple of examples here that maybe you've seen some of these. Um, so and, uh, we got a picture of both Chris and I here. So with Chris's picture or Dr. Lorraine's picture on the, on the left, um, you're gonna see you know, the one with the line through it, the one that you shouldn't be doing. If you look at his low back, also known as your lumbar spine, that's really kind of crunched in this, we call it a flex position. That's kind of what happens when you sit in the couch. And, uh, and right, if you sit on a very you know, uh, soft couch, you're gonna end up in that slouch position. The more time we spend in that position, the higher risk that you have for developing low back pain. So we like to talk about how the neutral positioning for the low back is actually a little bit of extension. If you see the, 
the proper sitting that Chris has, the one that doesn't have a line through it, he has a little bit of extension in his low back, that curve. And that's the kind of position that we want to promote. So thinking about lifting the back of your head, like you have a string up at the back of your head, lifting you up, elongating your spine. And here are just some pictures too of how you can kind of implement this while you are uh, at work as well with a desk. I'm sure you guys have seen both of these postures, the slouching. And again, you can just develop a significant amount of neck pain, low back pain, uh, hip pain, even from these kinds of postures. So. And just another example, you know, this is a great example of this uh, lady. She's actually using a, uh, a lumbar support. So you can either hold yourself up actively with your muscles, um, using your muscles to have that extension curve in your low back, or you can even, you know, use a rolled up towel or a small pillow uh, to support your low back so that it can have that natural extension curve. Same thing here when you're standing, thinking about keeping yourself up tall, keeping your chest up a little bit more. Um, and this is, this will also allow for better engagement for core stability, which I know Chris is going to be talking about a little bit later as well. And it's important to think about too, that, you know, the weight of your head is about 12 pounds. So the farther forward you're pushing your head, gravity is always going down. And if it's not, then your posture is the least of your worries then. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, so gravity is always going down. If you, so if you think about, you're pushing your head forward with this poor posture. Um, the gravity, the weight of your head is actually gonna be increasing on the muscles. The force on your muscles is gonna be increasing and it's gonna increase excessive tension, uh, which can also lead to back pain and neck pain and things like that. So we, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh one of the things that Corinne mentioned in the discussion of posture is this concept of elongation or neutral, neutral uh, uh, joints. And what we're going to look at with this posture uh, or with this uh, uh, exercise is what we call a chin retractor in the McKenzie Method. Uh, this image is from the McKenzie Method books. Uh, you again can see a, a general trend toward a forward head posture on the left and then a retracted chin on the, on the right. And that's what we're going to look at here. As we go forward here, this concept of a chin retraction ties perfectly in with your seated posture. So uh, say you're listening at home or you're watching this at home, you might test putting your chin out. Uh, and then you're going to think about drawing your chin back like, a, like your skull is a book on a shelf. You're just sliding back. And you might feel a stretch in your upper back or your, your upper neck. Uh, and it might feel like there's a lot of tension there. If there's a lot of tension there, this might be a perfect exercise for you as you continue to go forward. So again, uh, uh, the far left, that, that image shows significant forward head posture. The chin retraction on the far right, we're almost exaggerating that stretch there. And, and that might be something that you do uh, 10 times every couple hours or 10 times every hour as you go forward here. Okay, so foam rolling. This is a, a big activity. I think it's becoming more common. You see stuff on maybe social media about it. Um, and if you don't know what it is exactly, but it, it is, uh, we have some pictures of it of, on a couple slides. But um, what this is doing is it's providing soft tissue mobilization. So whether you're really active or not very active, uh, it is typical for you to build up, you know, uh, adhesions or even trigger points in certain muscle tissues in certain areas of your, of your body. And manipulating that tissue, whether it's you going and getting a massage or you can just regularly foam roll as well. I mean, there are pros and cons to both of them, but foam rolling can assist in uh, improving healing, reducing pain and tension. Uh, and you can also use it to improve uh, postural. So you can do some st uh, stretching of some postural muscles. And uh, yeah, these are some great pictures. Um, and uh, the one on the, on the top left here, you can see uh, Dr. Lorang is using the foam roller and he can improve his, you know, also improving the, um, you know, reducing tension maybe in his thoracic uh, paraspinal muscles that are right next to his spine and he can also use this to improve his thoracic mobility and there are other some postural stretches that you can use with this like the very bottom picture. Chris is uh, opening up his chest muscles letting gravity stretch out his chest and that's going to allow for better posture as well. 
And you can use it for improving your hip mobility too. So we actually have a video of this on our social media page right now um, for using it for your iliotibial band and your uh, posterior hip muscles. So kind of like your butt cheek muscles, those can get excessively tight, especially if you're sitting a lot or you're moving a lot. Um, either population has difficulties with this, but we have, I know Chris has a couple of case studies of uh, individuals that started foam rolling and started seeing massive relief in their pain. Yeah, I'll jump, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'll jump back to this slide. Um, early on in my clinical practice, I, I saw a fellow, uh, uh, we'll call him Tracy, 50 year old, maybe 55 year old male, uh, chronic and recurrent mid back pain. Uh, he had seen other characters in his past and had had relief, but he went uh, regularly. And there's nothing wrong with going regularly. But uh, when I showed him these foam rolling exercises, especially for the mid and upper back, uh, I didn't see him for months. And he came back and he said, uh, Chris, you should have never shown me that foam roller exercise because it helps me feel so much better uh, throughout my day. Uh, and so that's a nice one. And, and Corinne's going to talk about some of the hip and knee pain examples that she's seen in uh, her clinical practice as well. Yes, foam rolling is typically, uh, especially for individuals that have hip and knee pain, um, when we're using those uh, mobility foam rolling activities that we had pictures of before, um, I have had a lot of people that feel like they are able to leave the clinic sooner and be more independent with managing their symptoms on their own by regularly foam rolling rather than coming in to see me doing a lot of soft tissue work and stretching foam rolling can kind of take the place of that and allow them to be more independent because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to teach you how to handle your symptoms on your own and allow you to be more independent. Um, and of course, if you need us, we're here, but that's the big goal for us here. Yeah, and definitely. So our Instagram handle, you can see it on the screen here is Capital Car DSM. There's lots of videos and we'll, we'll showcase a couple here, but um, lots of different videos on other exercises you can do at home. So uh, now, you you may have heard us uh, mention this McKenzie method in the past. So the McKenzie method is a, a physical therapy approach that is an invaluable approach to pain management. And uh, one of the exercises that we show, and I'll step back to that, is what we call the McKenzie uh, extension. And that exercise is often given, not only that exercise, but as a way to treat uh, radiculopathy or pain, numbness, tingling into the lower extremities. Uh, as well as sciatic -like, sciatica symptoms or sciatic-like symptoms that are uh, going into the lower extremities. So this movement, um, you can then combine with, say you do a deep squat uh, throughout your day, this might be an exercise that you do periodically throughout your day just to get some movement in. Um, just a bit of a case study, uh, I saw a fellow a number of years ago, he was an older gentleman, uh, we'll call him Sid, he had symptoms that ra radiated into his leg, I sent him home with these uh, press-ups as well as the standing extension that you see on the far right of the screen. I called him about 48 hours later uh, just to uh, check in, see how his symptoms were going. He was going out of town, so I wasn't able to see him uh, uh, immediately after. And he said he was doing the exercises, he was feeling better. And I didn't see him again for about three or four months. And when I did see him, it was at a social event uh, out and about, uh, and he said, a similar story. You should have never shown me those exercises because I don't have to come back anymore. My symptoms are gone. So these can be really nice uh, tools uh, for at-home exercises and then both uh, uh, from a clinical lens. When we see a patient, these are exercises that we give every day to patients. Uh, okay, Corinne's going to dig into some belly breathing concepts here. Okay, so there are different ways to, to breathe and uh, I, I talk about how that you can breathe with your chest and you can also breathe with your belly. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, can recognize, especially if they're chest breathing. When you inhale, your chest might rise. When you exhale, it'll, it'll kind of depress a little bit. And, and there are different times on when we should chest breathe and when we shouldn't chest breathe. So chest breathing is really great for exercise because the muscles that involve lifting the rib cage and getting air in is going to, uh, that's connected to your sympathetic nervous system. So it's really great for exercise. It's releasing uh, stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, and that's gonna allow for better muscle contraction. Okay, but if we're just sitting and maybe we're checking emails or you're sitting all day at work, chest breathing is not the most optimal thing because as you're breathing with your chest, you're releasing those hormones still and we're developing excessive tension. 
So uh, talking about breath, belly breathing, how you would do this, this is a fantastic picture. When you inhale, you're gonna be thinking about expanding the sides of your belly, the sides of your abdomen, and also thinking about expanding, you're pushing your belly out. So when you inhale, your belly is gonna push out, perfect. And then when you exhale, it's gonna kind of go back in. And not only is this really great uh, for core stability, like Chris is gonna talk about, but you're using your diaphragm with this activity. And when you breathe with your diaphragm, when you inhale, um, that is uh, connected to your parasympathetic nervous system, which is going to be releasing relaxation hormones, healing hormones, and uh, happy hormones for your head. So it's perfect for um, assisting in reducing anxiety, and it's honestly more optimal for you know sitting for most of the day if you're being more sedentary. Breathing with your diaphragm is going to reduce your risk for developing excessive muscle tension. And also, uh, when you inhale with your diaphragm, your diaphragm flattens, and that's just above your abdomen. So that's going to increase the pressure in your intra-abdominal cavity, which Chris is going to talk about in a little bit. It's going to be perfect for core stability. And Corinne's given a, a perfect introduction. We'll do a quick quiz break here. Uh, uh, since we're in Iowa, I always like to talk about uh, uh, vegetable, fruit and vegetable consumption. So here's the quiz. What is the percentage of adults who reported consuming two or more fru fruits, three or more vegetables daily in Iowa? Think about that. Uh, it's not the happiest number. So we should all work to increase uh, uh, fruit and vegetable consumption, in particular vegetables. So I was at 7.1% of adults who reported consuming two or more fruits, three or more vegetables. Nationwide, though, we're only at 8%. So in theory, uh, in a perfect world, uh, let's get that to, to a much higher number as we go forward here. Uh, just a quick uh, break about uh, acupuncture. So we offer some acupuncture needling treatments here at our clinic. Uh, this acupuncture is becoming a much more recognized form of both pain management uh, treatment and uh, other treatments as well. And in particular, as it relates to the above and beyond cancer world, uh, this point they call pericardium six in the in the Chinese medicine world is known to prevent postoperative nausea and vomiting. And the effect of the PC six acupoint stimulation is comparable to anti uh, medications. That's a significant uh, piece of research there, and 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 something to consider as you go forward, uh, whether you're uh, in the middle of cancer treatment or or after and, and experiencing some of these symptoms. That point may be important for you as you go forward. Uh, also, a brief plug on, on uh, Dr. Schreier. Often in this pandemic, we are seeing people seek out telehealth options. They don't feel comfortable or they're high risk. They don't want to go in public. And so they're scheduling uh, telehealth PT visits. So that's something you can do with uh, Dr. Schreier. Me as well, but you cannot be adjusted uh, by telehealth. Uh, only, only exercises. So. That's not uh, recommended anyway. So. That's right. Uh, now, uh, Karen uh, gave us a brief introduction to this concept of intra-abdominal pressure. So that's what we're going to talk about next, uh, in addition to proper lifting strategies. So I want to come back uh, to this slide. Karen mentioned, if we look at the image on the right, and these, these are uh, images that are taken from the Prague School of Rehabilitation, rehabds.org, uh, uh, .com rather. And what I want you to see on the right, there's a, there's a number of images here, but if you go to the very bottom uh, and you look at the letter A, you see that the abdominal wall is expanded. And letter B there, you see that that abdominal wall is, is caved in. If we go above that, you see the letter A, the, the abdominal wall is, is engaged, the spine is fairly neutral. And if we look at B, you see a, a, a hyperextension of the lumbar curve and almost a concavity of, of the uh, abdominal wall. So why the belly breathing is important is the expansion of your abdomen is key. Now what I want to talk about as we think about core stability is, say you just take your fingers and you poke them into the sides of your abdomen. And I just want you to cough. <coughs> you can kind of feel that expansion occur. <coughs> and it's that pressure that exists when you're trying to go to the bathroom or you're straining to go to the bathroom or if you're lifting any sort of weights or uh, groceries, uh, book bags, or you are at the gym lifting weights, you want to think about engaging that concept of intra-abdominal pressure. So pressurizing your abdomen, breathing into your belly, and engaging that outward pressure 360 degrees around 
allows you to lift most strongly and have your core be the strongest that it can be. And as we look at lifting strategies as it relates to this, uh, the adult on the left very closely mimics what we see with infants. And we always see infants with their little abdomens protruding. They're physiologically uh, executing what, what we call intra-abdominal pressure with stability, strength, and it allows them to be strong and stable as they go forward. Now, okay, here's an image of a, of a weightlifter. When we think about expansion broadly, though the arrows on this image on the left uh, show that the pressure from your abdomen, when you're pushing outward, the stability comes back and stabilizes your spine and stabilizes your low back so that it can be the most uh, efficient and stable that it can be, allowing you to be more stable and more efficient with your movement. As we proceed here, uh, uh, Corinne's going to dig into mindfulness and meditation as it relates to pain management. Yes, and uh, so kind of going along with the with the belly breathing that we were talking about before. Yes, it's perfect. It's 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 needed for uh, core stability, but it, like I said, it's connected to your parasympathetic nervous system, system, which is your rest and digest, healing hormones, relaxation hormones, and happy hormones. And uh, there are lots of benefits when it comes to um, pairing your diaphragmatic breathing with spending time being more mindful and maybe even taking a couple minutes a day to meditate. I get a lot of questions or a lot of comments from individuals that say that they, they don't have the ability to meditate because they can't turn their brain off. And it's like, well, that's the point of meditation. So meditation is not completely shutting your brain off, but being aware of what your brain is doing and where your thoughts are going. Um, and that will allow you to, to harness that and control it a little bit better. So um, I'll start with, you know, how, so how do I start with this kind of thing? Uh, finding a, a, a small area to, or a, a quiet area, maybe if you want to turn off the lights or not, um, with somewhere where you're going to be comfortable and you're going to feel safe and practice that diaphragmatic breathing. Again, when you inhale, think about really pushing your belly up towards the ceiling and then relaxing and just letting it passively kind of exhaling your air out. And while you're doing this, think about where are your thoughts going? Um, try to think about positive things. Uh, think about the things that you're thankful for. And, um, and not only is this, you know, you know, this isn't something that's just a bunch of hokey pokey stuff. This has actually been proven to assist with en enhancing things like digestion, even improving your uh, um, things like focus, reducing your risk for Alzheimer's disease, and the, the other things on here, uh, obviously promoting relaxation and calmness, and maybe you'll even fall asleep. <laughs> uh, oftentimes, if you're having a difficult time, relax and go to sleep. Practice some mindfulness and meditation, and that might be the perfect thing that you need to just help get your, your emotions a little bit better under control. Okay. Uh, uh, you saw some of these images of a deep squat earlier in the presentation, both as we, as we were discussing the McKinsey extensions uh, and proper lifting strategies. So <clears throat> if we think about our uh, current environment, we have chairs, we have couches, we have tables, we have desks, we have computers. Uh, 30,000 years ago, our ancestors did not have any of these things. Uh, and often uh, a standard human position was what we call a deep squat. And I often encourage my patients uh, to try to incorporate this into your day. And while it seems a little silly to uh, put your laptop on a coffee table to try this exercise, you might find that it's really comfortable. And in this position, you might find that your mid back feels better, that your low back feels better, that you are not so hunched over your computer. This is something that you can try throughout your day. You don't necessarily just have to be on your computer, but you can use your cell phone here. You might uh, eat your breakfast or your lunch in this position. It's a nice way to, to uh, engage your uh, belly breathing in this position, moves your hips into a deep uh, state of flexion, moves your ankles into dorsiflexion, you can elongate your spine here to feel that stretch all through your mid and upper back. And you might find that's just a nice way to uh, add another movement into your day. And especially if you can incorporate your technology into that uh, uh, exercise, then all the better and all the easier. And uh, just a, a quick plug. So oftentimes uh, I get the, not, I don't want to call it an excuse, but it kind of is an excuse that I am too busy for exercise. Uh, yes, I understand. Uh, uh, we are all very busy and um, it's important to think about your priorities as well. 
So they're always, you're always going to have small pockets here and there. Maybe, um, maybe every time you go to the bathroom, you make sure that you do some squats or while you're brushing your teeth, practice doing single leg stance or going up and down on your, on your toes or um, doing some squats while you brush your teeth. I don't, I mean, there's no harm in that. Um, but picking small pockets of time throughout the day that you can plug these things in. You don't have to go to the gym to get benefits from exercise. Um, that's another thing, especially with COVID. Um, you know, yeah, we are, we're home more and, and people don't feel comfortable going to the gym. That's totally okay. Uh, doing, you know, being uh, physically active is more of a lifestyle rather than an activity. And uh, it's something to identify with rather than uh, thinking about forcing yourself to do it. Um, and it's definitely, you know, a habit creating thing. But if you think about the amount of time that you spend from being sedentary, um, the amount of time that you would spend in healthcare be because you're more sedentary goes up significantly more because sedentary activities typically are, are not the best for our bodies, but exercise can help combat those things with improving blood flow and brain health. And so you're you're honestly uh, not, you're not too busy to do some exercise is typically what I end up telling people. Um, but uh, it's, it's important to prioritize your health and, uh, and your time as well. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, number 10 here. So, so the exercises that we've gone over so far, we talked about posture, we talked about chin retractions, we talked about belly breathing, we talked about extensions, core stability, a deep squat, meditation as a, as a, as a, as a self-care and as a tip for pain management and pain relief at, at home. If those things are not solving your problem, there's always physical therapy, chiropractic care, acupuncture, dry massage and soft tissue manipulation. And in a perfect world, we could seek those out in a very uh, easy fashion. Obviously this pandemic has changed a few things. It's maybe a little bit more difficult, but uh, many clinics, including ours, are, are following all the CDC, gui CDC guidelines or masking, universal masking, uh, cleaning services all day long, um, and to provide a safe environment for, for our community and for our patients. And so if ever that, uh, uh, if your symptoms come to that, uh, uh, please do reach out or please do reach out to a provider in your area. Uh, Dr. Deming mentioned in the introduction that our clinic is currently in the East Village, and that is true. We are moving actually to uh, the 42nd Street or Roosevelt Cultural District area. So we'll be in 942nd Street in March or April, so keep your eyes peeled on that. Again, our handle uh, is CapSM. If you have any questions at all, please do reach out. We are at office at capopowerdsm.com on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, you can always give us a ring. I didn't even list the phone number here, but uh, uh, you can always call us as well. Uh, and uh, Corinne, do you have any final thoughts or uh, statements to add here? I do not. Well, thanks so much for your attention, everyone. And thanks for listening and tuning into this video. Uh, we hope these exercises will provide you some relief. Again, these are movements and, and prescri prescribed exercises that we give out every day, almost uh, each and every one of our patients. So uh, we hope you'll find value in them. Hey, Chris and Corinne, thanks so much. A um, couple questions. Uh, Chris is going to be, I mean, Chris Goodale is going to be looking at the, the questions from the audience. A um, couple questions I have. So are there new ailments that you mm -hmm. would um, uh, say uh, are something that you're seeing in the COVID era? Are there some new um, ergonomic sort of things or um, behaviors that we're doing that are resulting in any particular muscular skeletal aches and pains? Um, and, and do you think that the anxiety uh, and the isolation is also contributing to some stiffness and various forms of muscular skeletal discomfort. Yeah, Corinne, you take this one first. I was gonna say, I for sure, as soon as people started working from home, I wouldn't say that they're new, um, but I started seeing higher um, uh, incidences, I guess, high, uh, more frequency of seeing patients that have um, neck pain, uh, thoracic pain, which is like your upper back and, and low back pain. Um, and honestly, and, and more uh, hip pain. So these are 
all can be stemmed from having a poor setup in your office. And I'm seeing a lot of that. I have been educating probably more, more on ergonomics than I ever have in this period of time on ergonomics and managing anxiety. So um, a big thing, um, I've been teaching a lot about mindfulness and, and trying to help people manage, you know, they're not seeing their family as often as they want to, or they're not doing those social activities as much as they want to. Um, trying to develop healthier habits of choosing to not overeat or even, um, you know, just being more sedentary, even though that's our knee jerk reaction when we're stressed out. Um, trying to help people manage their anxiety and with healthier habits. So yes, maybe not new, but more frequent of the, uh, of the ergonomical kind of problems. And I, I would wholeheartedly agree, not that they're necessarily different ailments, but maybe an increase in neck pain, increase in mid-back pain, increase in headaches, anxiety, uh, uh, you know, if, if we would have talked about, you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, that anxiety increases pain levels. Well, you may have been laughed out of the room, but we, we understand now that, that anxiety triggers uh, pathways uh, that increase patients' rates of pain. And it, 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 it tightens the, them up in a way that, that maybe makes their pain uh, increased. And so it's tr true. Uh, you know, is a, is a work from home injury a worker's comp injury? Uh, I, th I think that's a, a new world that we're navigating in and we don't yet know how that's all gonna uh, uh, shake out. And I think that the work from home uh, concept is here to stay. Uh, and I think how can we help best uh, treat those patients or set those patients up and, and employees up for success at home? They might need, you know, a new desk, a new chair, a, a new workstation altogether because so many patients are working from their kitchen table, not that that's a bad place, um, or their kitchen island, or their uh, kid's desk that, <laughs> their kid's desk that uh, went to college and now they're, now they're in their kid's bedroom working at a small desk. You know, it's, it's not the best environment, so. Well, and the, the cool thing about uh, telehealth too, or even just coming into the clinic, I oftentimes am frequently helping people Let's get creative about your setup. Tell me about your setup at home. Um, do you have something like this at home that you can substitute for this? And some people are, they're going in and they're taking their office chairs or their office desks from work and they're putting them in their house. And if their employer like is okay with that, I encourage them to do that because it's gonna put them at a lower risk for injury if they don't have the proper supplies. But a telehealth appointment can also help. I know I've helped someone um, they weren't sure how to get creative with their uh, with their setup at home and they didn't want to come into the clinic. So we did a telehealth appointment and we kind of got creative and we checked that out and helped them out. Makes complete sense. I don't um, see any questions in the question and answer at this point, but I, I was really interested about the meditation part. You know, that, that was not something that I thought you might be talking about because you were, you, you talked about exercise and activity and uh, but that is something that from a, an above and beyond cancer standpoint we've seen a wonderful benefit uh, by the meditation class that we offer on a weekly basis. And that's awesome that's something that I know for sure that I teach to patients all the time especially if they deal with anxiety um, yeah it's a common thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to step aside for a little bit. So if you covered this, I apologize. Did you talk about alternating between sitting and standing and having desks that it might be variable? And um, did uh, anyone, did you say anything about uh, the, the sitting on a ball, the, the big balls that act as chairs? And what's your thoughts of those? Chris, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, Dr. Demi, we, we didn't address in particular a sit to stand desk. But it's true. I encourage variability all throughout the day. So as much as you can change your situation, seated to standing, to, to, to squatting, to maybe, maybe you're laying on your stomach on the floor and your laptop's on in front of you, as much as you can change your environment, the better. Uh, and as much as you can be in a neutral spinal position or, or neutral joint position, the better. Um, and as for the balls, I, I love sitting on the balls. I actually have, I don't know if we can show it here, but it's called a wobble stool. So it's just a very slender mm -hmm. stool and it, and it tips all around. So what, what's, the, a, what's the bottom of that look like? 
Yeah, good. Uh, lift it all the way up here. So okay. it generally is, it, it tips and, and shifts around. And, and so you can just very quickly uh, kind of alter your position. And, and I love these stools. Um, and often people will say, well, what kind of chair should I get? Well, I say you can slouch in a $10 uh, folding chair <laughs> and you can slouch in a $500 ergonomic chair. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily always matter what it is you're sitting on, as long as you can sort of actively think about how you are in, in your own body, in your own environment. Uh, but the wobble stools, the, the balls, anything that encourages variability uh, is, is a good thing. Yeah, but that uh, the ball and that wobble stool not only encourages variability, but it's pretty hard to slouch. True. I mean, you, you get back 10 degrees, you're going, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah good question well Corinne, I anything, anything I you want to add to that Corinne don't see any other questions so I think we'll uh, wrap it up for tonight but I just want to thank you guys again um, what you're talking about I mean treating cancer cells is something hopefully people only have to go through once in a lifetime mm -hmm. learning how to sit and stand and walk and get through our daily activity is in every moment of every day situation and uh, I'm glad we have uh, healthcare professionals like you two that uh, help us uh, maintain a great state of health so thanks for helping us focus on this uh, I think I might get one of those wobble stools myself. I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yep, Chris, thank I'll, you let you, I'll let you take it out. Yeah, we'll, uh, we do record these uh, cancer education series and they're available on both the Mercy One uh, website and also our Above and Beyond Cancer YouTube page. So if you, if you missed part of this one, or you'd like to uh, see the other selections from our uh, more than 50 weeks of cancer education series, they're available on both of those locations. So thank you both for being part of this and we'll look forward to doing this again next week. Mm -hmm.